Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori if you're new here and today I am going to be showing you some meals that I cooked up to save some time and some money in the kitchen. I know you all love these videos and I do too. I'm having such a great time cooking alongside of all of you, but I am starting this video out the night before. We needed to marinate some meat and believe it or not, it is snowing today. So these beautiful nights just kind of left us this week but that's okay so I have some shaved steak here from King Supers and I'm going to marinate that to dehydrate it into beef jerky so I wanted to give a big shout out to the company Denali they actually sent over their dehydrator for me to try out I am so humbled and just so excited to be partnering with them and representing them it is a company that I have really had my eyes on for a few years now and I I just appreciate their message and all that they do. Of course, I will leave all of the measurements and ingredients down in the description box for you. And I'm going to be leaving you a link to shop with Denali. They have so many products for food preservation on their website. But what caught my eye with this company was their lids and rings for canning. You all know I love to water bath can and I'm dabbling in pressure canning, but they are offering offering my subscribers, my followers, a free set of rings and lids. So go on their website, check that out. You can get it sent to you. All you have to do is pay for shipping, but they are awesome. I have a 10 out of 10 seal rate with that company. And honestly, I cannot say the same with some of the larger names that I've been canning with for years now. But back to the beef jerky, I'm just taking it out the day after and I'm spreading it evenly onto these layers and I try not to let anything touch. I love making beef jerky like this, but I know everyone does it differently. Sometimes I take a ribeye and then just freeze it halfway, slice it and marinate it. But I love these thin slices. They just melt in your mouth and they're delicious. So I encourage everyone to check out my recipe down in the description box. It's an adapted recipe from my dad. Most of my cooking I get from my dad, but but there are some random recipes in there from other relatives, but basis is they are all family recipes that I love to share with all of you if you're new here. So this dehydrator really does it all. And I was being a bit impatient and wanted to try some more things out. So I did end up putting some zucchini and squash in here as well as some apples. And I wanted to see if I could make some veggie and fruit chips and it worked well. It did not mess with the moisture but I would uh, advise you to just keep it, you know, all meat or all veggies or whatever you are planning on dehydrating. So I am doing the quick recipe and this is going to go at 167 for around six hours and it turned out amazing. Honestly, I think this unit is very incredible. It is so low noise, which was a big one for me. And you do want to make sure you are keeping it at least a foot away from your wall and you're not having anything touch it because it does still get warm. So while that cooks, we are going to do a little local loop and grab our essentials for the week. So we usually grab some honey and some bread. Sometimes we grab milk and we grab veggies and fruit when it comes into season. So first stop is honey. Local honey is incredible for Im your immune system and I encourage everyone to look for some, but it's a great price and I just love this honey. Now we have made it to the dairy. We absolutely love this milk. It's A2, A2 milk, and we typically get this when we're not buying raw. It is a very tricky thing to find raw milk in my state, but I did find a farm that I trust. It's just a little bit pricey for the farm share right now, so we are sticking with the A2, A2. I find that my kids can digest it pretty well, and we love this place. It is a honor system. You go in 
in, grab what you need, and then check yourself out. So we got some honey kefir for smoothies, and the kids really love it in their chocolate milk uh, as well as their hot chocolate. And then we also got an extra a chocolate milk for the ride home so again the kids absolutely love coming here because we can see the cows and we love to support local when we can afford it so back home beef jerky is still cooking and we are going to start on dinner so we are going to do some teriyaki rice bowls and i like to soak my rice when i can so i take a little bit of apple cider vinegar per cup of rice and then i just soak it in some water for about an hour or two ideally you would do this overnight but it does a lot for you it helps you digest this better if you didn't know rice can be contaminated with heavy amounts of arsenic and some other heavy metals so I would just suggest doing this if you can but if you forget just rinse your rice as best as you possibly can so I am just feeding the three of us I don't like to save rice it's just not something I love doing so I'm just going to make some for my husband when he gets home but I'm going to cook it on high here until it starts to bubble and then I'm going to reduce the heat and put a cover on it and then next up is going to be the salmon so this is the last of that wild caught salmon my dad got us for the holidays and we are going to do some pineapple teriyaki and I love this kinder's organic but it still has some uh, ingredients that I'm not a fan of so I probably won't be repurchasing just because I am on this healing journey journey and it has some ingredients in there that again I'm not a fan of so I'm just rubbing on this teriyaki and then I put the pineapples on top I did salt my salmon and typically I would add lemon but because I have acidity from my pineapple I'm not going to do that so I'm going to put this oven in the oven at 400 for around 16 minutes and I get a very flaky salmon when I do that so while the rice cooks that is what I'm doing I am going to attempt to make mayo. I don't have a lot of oil left, but uh, sometimes this works, sometimes it does not. So we're gonna go for it. You need a egg yolk, you need some neutral oil. I'm using avocado, lemon juice, a little bit of mustard, and then sriracha, and it's just gonna be like an Asian mayo. So fingers crossed. I need my immersion blender. Let's see if this works. And then gently place it in there. We're gonna add our oil okay gonna add a little bit of lemon then we stir it up uh -huh. i forgot we're adding honey too for sweetness but you could add sugar to lie gonna add a little bit of mustard what Thank you. And add a little bit of the sriracha. So the goal is you take this and get the egg yolk in between and then blend it, but don't lift is my understanding. I don't know if this will work. We shall see. And then slowly lift. So I'm scared to lift it, but it did get pretty thick. I think this may work. So for the rice at around 18 minutes, I take the lid off, I take the heat off completely, and then I just put about a tablespoon of grass-fed butter 
in there and I will let that melt and then when I'm ready to serve I will fluff it up with a fork and add a little bit of salt and that does take some of the moisture out so if you like yours on the more I guess wet side for lack of better term uh, don't put the salt on it because that will just draw moisture but that's what I want those little tiny holes in there and it's almost ready to fluff not yet though Okay, salt is in there and it's ready to fluff. So I just take from the top. I know this seems super basic, but honestly, just read the directions with rice because you could really go south with this. <laughs> um, even taking like a wooden spoon to this never works for me. And I feel like I'm not particular with food. You know, we eat what we can, but rice somehow always messes up for me. So just gonna fluff it up a little bit. And then here's how the pineapple teriyaki salmon came out. So that is gonna be delicious i'm going to assemble the kids bowls first and show you that and then i will do mine okay here are the kids bowls we have strawberries and basically it's deconstructed so they have their cucumbers on the side pineapple salmon teriyaki the white rice with just classic soy sauce they don't like liquid aminos or coconut aminos so we just keep it classic until we can find an alternative uh and then delilah has the same so why eats more than her obviously but uh we try and do chopsticks sometimes we are going to keep it pretty simple today and just use their forks i'm going to assemble mine are you excited yeah <laughs> and then we'll go from there Okay, here's what I have going on. I just have the rice on the bottom, salmon, pineapple, teriyaki. I have the cucumbers, and then I have those pickled onions from those pickled beet eggs we did the other week. So we have some pink onion on there. I think it's a pretty touch. I, I don't like pickled ginger, so I mean, I feel like I do, but it's really hard to find like a clean version of pickled ginger. So pickled onions at it is uh you could also do you know like pickled daikon if you wanted you could do sauerkraut you could do hmm, what am i trying to think of here okay the word i was looking for was kimchi so if you were thinking that you are correct but i'm gonna do that and then i'm gonna drizzle that uh, sriracha sauce on top yum so I would say it thickened up a little bit in the refrigerator, but I am not disappointed in this. I really think that is the key, keeping that yolk in between the immersion blender and then going from there. So I'm just gonna do a drizzle, but if you wanted something thick like this, you could even put it in a Ziploc baggie and like cut the corner and squeeze it off, do all that if you want it to be fancy. But this is as fancy as we are gonna get at Mountain Mama Living. This looks amazing. I'm going to enjoy this. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. I wanted to do something unique and different. Dinner was 10 out of 10. Absolutely amazing. That recipe was phenomenal. Check the descriptions for the measurements, but here's how my beef jerky turned out. It's again, delicious. I am proud of myself this week. They came out really well. And here are the veggie chips. The yellow squash was of course a little sweeter. And then the apples were delicious. I just sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon on there and we went from there. But I think this is gonna be a game changer for my prepper pantry. I'm going to be able to keep food longer and I'm excited to see what I can dehydrate. So definitely, if you get a chance, check out the description box, head on over to Denali and check out some of their canning essentials. I was also in the beginning of the video wearing their home setter jacket and it's phenomenal and comfy and I have just been loving it for these springtime mornings in the garden. So thanks for being here. I hope to catch you on the next one. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative. Bye y'all. I'm going out with you tonight. Are you close?